all of these competitors, all three of them except strafing. We talked to Jay before the game. He said, man, my confidence level is very high, but I've got to settle down early, Larry. I'm really concerned about that. I'm going to be watching these first three or four minutes here in this first quarter to see how he's handling the nerves there. What would you suggest for him, maybe from a play calling standpoint or stick Stills, uh, stick skills there, how would he handle that early situation? Run the ball. There you go. If you <laughs> if yeah. you are nervous, just run the ball. And if you can pick up some yards running, it's going to calm you down. It's going to get you going. And that's going to put your opponent on his heels. There is no worse feeling in Madden than not being able to stop or slow down the run. We used to call that a speed bump defense. <laughs> All it would do is just give you a little bit. But – if he can go ahead, get these first few plays out, have some kind of confidence and some success, it's just going to make everything a lot easier for him as the game goes on. Now, these two guys have yet to play in a live situation. They don't know a whole lot about each other. How does that figure into what's going to transpire here and how they go about facing one another? They're going to have the element of surprise, which is very rare in today's Madden with Twitch and <laughs> the live events and all the wonderful television coverage that we've been getting. So they're really going to have – a quarter to really feel each other out, to see what their opponent likes to do, what they need to take away, where their tendencies are. And whoever can make the adjustments in game is about the winner. So you're saying it's like a heavyweight fight, right? They're going to fill each other out here early on. And there's a quick pass there, and it's caught by a receiver there. And it's, is that Philip Dorsett? I believe that is here on the left hand side. We'll give him six yards. There's second down and four from Tay. You'll see a lot of the Patriots offense. Defense, he'll run the Giants. Uh, so with that Patriots offense, of course, you're going to get a lot of trips gun bunch and some tights there so you saw his first play he threw that jag route that that's just as good as a run he was waiting he wasn't looking at any of his other reads besides that drag he was waiting for it once it got open he was able to throw Leonard Fournette taken down right there that's a loss of about a yard or two it'll be third down and six great job on defense by Jay Wolfman I'm looking at the receiving core for Tay He's got Randy Moss. He's got Hill out there, and he's got Philip Dorsett. So he's got some speed on the outside. Then he's got the big back uh, from Jacksonville or Saxonville. Leonard Fournette here as we get down to third down and six. Back to pass. Oh, watch out. And he's taken down Mike Vick. What a sack. First sack of the game, and that is Sequeen Griffin from the University of Central Florida down there in Orlando. And that's what I was going to notice. You have Michael Vick. You can't take that sack. You had your, run, your running back open to the left. Michael Vick's a left-handed thrower. You got to make that pass, and if not, you got to get out that pocket. He had nothing but daylight ahead of him. Early concerns by Tay and Jay Wolfman. Tay right now, the, the biggest concern, a fourth down and 14. He's going, and he's got the catch on the sideline. Michael Vick completes a second pass of the game, and he got it right there about a yard after the six. And he's got Tyreek Hill, the cheetah there, on a gain of about 15 or 16, picks up the first down. Ball now at the 45. Right? An incredibly accurate pass by Michael Vick. When he needed it, he was able to get it done. Back into the gun, and there's a flag on the play. The first down now and five had a had an offsides on Wolfman. So maybe some nerves now on Wolfman. Did seem like the, the, the one that was a little more reserved now, but we'll see if he can settle in here after allowing a fourth down conversion there on fourth and 14. Mike Vick back to pass. Got a man across the middle. Oh, overshot Tyreek Hill. That's kind of hard to do. That's very hard to do, <laughs> but if somebody's going to do it, it would be Michael Vick. <laughs> we always say at least two or three times a game, he's going to throw that ball in the bushes. <laughs> That's what we call it. <laughs> Growing up playing football on the street. Well, he did play in Atlanta, so in Atlanta, or outside Atlanta, he got the University of Georgia. They got hedges. Yes, they definitely did. <laughs> Mike Vick back to pass, got a receiver. Tyreek Hill on the outside, give him about four or five yards there. So it'll be third down and one gain of four for the Cheetah. So uh, a lot of uh, a potpourri of options, if you will, from a play calling standpoint. And, and notice how quickly, when Tay was faced with that fourth and 14, he didn't think, he didn't have to budge. He went automatically, he knew what play he wanted. He had it open. Look, He looks incredibly comfortable in this right now. Jay Wolfman has to be a little nervous. Leonard Fournette, first carry of the day where he picks up positive yards there, gains about five. So he's got a picks up a first down, a couple of carries now, three total yards for the big workhorse, uh, the Bayou Bengal, the former LSU Tiger there. Once again, pick hands it off to the left-hand side. This time Fournette taken down. Give him a one-yard gain. They're call it two, second down and eight, four. Take. Now, I may have spoke too soon. Maybe Jay Wolfman has a bend but don't break defense mentality. <laughs> Maybe he's allowed him to get down the field, but this is where he locks up and, and 
plants his flag and makes his stand. Because he's going to have to do something. Because right now it looks like it's a little too easy to attack. So far, just one big play, but that one play was huge. Could have changed the outcome or at least changed the momentum of the game. Tyreek Hill with a nice catch, stays inbound, picks up another four or five yards. Now that is enough for a first down. Once again, hits the gal on that nice little out route on the outside. Here's the question I had. There was nobody there. If he just ran to the left with Vic, who knows if he doesn't pick up that block, he might still be running. That's a good point there. Haven't seen him run with Vic yet, but we've seen Leonard Fournette now for the fourth time carrying some defenders. Picks up about five yards there. Give him six. Second down and four. Game has slowed down a little bit for uh, Tay. We saw the bobbing and the weaving. Now he's starting to get a little comfortable, and that's what both guys talked about. Trying to figure out this first quarter. So important for both of these competitors. And this is a different Fournette than we saw in Pittsburgh. This one is rumbling, bubbling, stumbling, breaking tackles and getting first downs. Ankle looks good for old Leonard Fournette. Hammy looking pretty good, too. He's feeling pretty good uh, at U.S. Bank Stadium. But you know it's inside. We got on short sleeves here in Minneapolis. So you know uh, the temperature's about, what, 68 to 70 degrees here. So uh, we're good here inside of the old. Of the old U.S. Bank Stadium. The Metrodome around here. Just the Metrodome, man. The baggy dome. From the twins with them. How are you inside the 12 and somebody has seven yards of separation? He was wide open. That's called zone defense. No, that's called no zone defense. <laughs> second down to 10. Actually, uh, second down to 10. Did he not catch the ball? I don't know how he dropped it because he was wide open. Yeah, yeah. But way, to, way to converge on the ball. <laughs> Second down to 10, Vic back to pass. Once again, plenty of time. He's got an eternity. Here comes a, a defender finally in his face. Overthrown, he wisely throws away. Vic now 4 of 7, 36 yards on the day. Third down to 10 coming up here. He's going to have to open it up here a little bit. Red zone's kind of hard to score down there. And if you're Jay Wolf here, you got to take this as a victory. You know, one down, because you, you got to think Tay's going to take his points here. If you can just lock up for this one down, you get your half a stop, and you're right here in this ballgame. You can feel good about this drive. And he hands it off to Leonard Fournette. A little conservative play there. Taken down by Reed. Gain of just one yard. Fourth down and nine. You go ahead and take the field goal. Here. Yep. You can tell by that play call that Tate was happy to get his three points. He knew he had already reserved himself to the fact that he was taking three. Wasn't going for seven. And that just, it makes me wonder what his mindset is coming into this game. Is he trying to just keep it close and hope that he can pull something sure. out at the end? Or does he feel like he should win this game? Like a lot of players would have taken a shot at that third down and maybe even gone for it on fourth. But with it being his first time in the hot seat, wanted to make sure he came away with points on that drive. You can, you can definitely see where, you know, where, where his head is at. I thought when Randy Moss was going in motion and he was going to have some single coverage on this side, on the right side, I thought, man, you know, take a shot, throw it up to Randy Moss. A little aggressive catch there. Uh, maybe you get something out of it, but you're right. I, I think he's thinking. I don't think he thinks he's the favorite. I think he's thinking, I want to stay in this thing. Put some pressure on Wolfman. Make him beat me. Uh, that's probably the mindset uh, for Tay, who is the youngest competitor here, 18 years of age from New Ulm, Minnesota. Uh, once again, a half hour from Mankato. He's got a bunch of family and friends here. Uh, you can hear those guys back there making some noise now. Jay Wolfman will have the ball for the first time today. He wants to shout out his crew, Jay Bird, Kwani, and Timor. The whole crew helped him laugh and get ready for his very first live event here. And we're live here at U.S. Bank Stadium in downtown Minneapolis. Vikings at home tomorrow against the fans. The Dolphins come into town. Huge NFL playoff implications for both teams as he picks up four yards with Ricky Williams. That's a nice little receiving course. Steve Smith Sr. Got Tyree Keel, and he's got Flash, Josh Gordon, also as well. So I want to see what Jay Wolfman can do with his offense. Tay's going to need to be able to stop that run. You can't give up six yards like that on first down because now he's able to open up his entire playbook. And when you give a player as good as Jay Wolf that kind of down in distance, you're putting yourself in a really, really bad position early. Well, i tell you what. It's going to be a long day if he can't stop the run because uh, that's what Wolfman does. I mean, he, I mean, his offense is a run-heavy offense. You're going to see that running attack there. And if you can't, you know, if you can't bow your neck against uh, Wolfman, it's, it's going to be a long day, and you're probably going to lose that battle because he's going to get time of possession, and he's going to probably do a good job in the red zone and score. So I'm seeing something different now. He's starting to stack the linebackers there. We'll see if he can go ahead and try to slow down this running attack. Ricky Williams to the outside. Nice spin move there. Oh, he spins right back into the arms of the defender, but he does pick up about six or seven yards. Another first down for Ricky Williams. So Jay Wolfman 
off and running, if you will. Yeah, he got a little spin happy there. The first one was a great technical move, but the second one, overdoing it, that's where you got to use your stick work, which separates the good from the great players. You see a lot of that uh, this year in Madden. You see a lot of guys, you know, with multiple spins, it's like, oh, you don't need all of that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I wonder, you know, what, what the stick skill situation is there or what, what they're thinking. First down and 10. Donovan McNabb back to the hole. Comes some pressure off the left-hand side. And it's Jones with the tackle and the sack. That is a loss of 11, Rico. I know Wolfman is kicking himself. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You're running the ball. You're doing great. <laughs> Your first time you drop back to a pass, this happens. And now you are behind the stick. So that run-heavy offense, uh, we'll see if he can get the work here. Now, if you're someone like Jay Wolfman, who's a run-heavy guy, is probably going to run the ball 60%, 70% of the time. Uh, this is a nightmare scenario, been behind the chains this much. We talked about it. We said... Can you throw the ball when you need to, when you're forced to? He says, I feel good about it. I didn't get the sense that he was 100% confident in it. And here's what I'll tell Jay Wolfman, Jay Bird, and any other Jay that wants to listen right now. <laughs> he's going to have to think outside the box. And when I say that, I truly mean because he's in a box right now. Tay has him. A big box. <laughs> no, a small, tight <laughs> box. Because right now. A White Castle box. <laughs> yes. Speaking of which, I made sure I got, as soon as I got to Minnesota, you got to love those. It's a staple of my diet. But. Right now, he needs he needs a conversion here because not a conversion. He needs to pick up some yards here. I mean, that'll give him a chance to get a conversion. Nice move by Tyreek Hill, and he picks up 23. Once again, that time using the spin move and didn't come back to it a second time. Take the yardage, and he picks up another, what, 14 yards after that initial spin move. Great job there. Tay has to be kicking himself. He had an opportunity there to get a full stop. Now you give Jay Wolf a little bit of momentum, some confidence, and now you're back for first and 10. I was telling Wolfman before the game, I'm like, look, I know you're a run heavy guy, but man, you got some pretty good receivers. You got Steve Smith Sr., he's a dog. You got Tyreek Hill, the fastest man in the NFL. And you got, you know, Flash Gordon, Josh Gordon. Gordon, who's doing a phenomenal job with the Patriots now. You can throw this thing if you have to, man. So I was almost like talking him up, waking him up, and getting him to believe that he can throw the ball when need be. We're going to have to see him <laughs> lock in right now. He's moving the ball. He got over that first initial setback. Now can he build on that? Second down and six. Got a receiver. There is Josh Gordon. Off to the sideline there. Ran a nice little stop route. Picks up about 10. It'll be first down and 10. McNabb off to a pretty good start. Some completions. Almost 40 yards passing so far. That's uh, got to bode well for Jay Wolf. Uh, old Jay Wolf man there on his first possession here. Now close to the red zone. Actually, you know, 24 yard line. Not technically in the red zone. First down. Nice little pitch to Ricky Williams. Got some room on the outside. Can he make a man miss? Oh, breaks a tackle and. Drags a man out of bounds, picks up another four yards after contact. Ricky Williams now four carries, 27 yards. That looks like the old run, Ricky, run, Ricky, run. Guy used to cover with the fans back in 05 and 06 down in MIA. It'll be interesting to see with Jay Wolfman getting that half stop early. If he's satisfied with three and he's going to keep it on the ground, or if he's trying to make sure he gets seven and opens his playbook up a little bit more. Man, I hope not. I do not want to see a rock fight. <laughs> not, not this early in the morning. Get some points on the board. Get that ball into the painted end zone. First down and 10. Run heavy Ohio, formation again. Ohio. Trips to the right. This time flips it on the left-hand side. Ohio, Ohio. Tight end Kittle on the backside. Kittle almost broke Shannon uh, Sharp's record the other day. Had 210 yards in the first half. That All he needed was four yards to break the record. Didn't get a catch get in the second half. <laughs> you figured they would have went to him. But, as you see. They targeted him once. That was it. It's a little bit more conservative now. He's getting down here with a two-minute warning. Both of these guys have had control of the clock. Yeah, I mean, it's already two minutes left here uh, in the first half. And this is just the second possession of the ball game. So uh, this thing is going to be close to the best here. McNabb back to pass. Pull it pass up. Aggressive catch. And it is brought in by Steve Smith, Jr. Ice up, son. Jay Wolfman with the lead. 6-3 pitting the PAT. I liked it. Ran a nice little streak right up the middle there with those trips on the left-hand side. Great play call, great formation, and hell of an execution there by Jay Wolfman. Yeah, now you can see he's sitting back, breathing a little easy, taking a little sip of water. He, he can now feel confident that, whew, first drive, got a stop, half a stop. My, my first offensive drive, I got a touchdown. This is the Madden game I play in my basement all the time. Okay, it just so happens that there are lights and a camera and commentators. 
<laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, you got lights and camera. How about some action? And we got some action there. First touchdown here of the MAC-19 Vikings Club Championship live here from U.S. Bank Stadium. Larry Ridley alongside Rico Williams, the Madden historian here live from Minneapolis, the Twin Cities. Leonard Fournette, pass from, oh, Mike Vick, he almost broke it. Was able to pick up another five or six yards. Mike Vick, once again, hitting the receiver out in the flat, and he's around midfield, Rico. If he breaks that tackle, he is still running. Absolutely, even still on that bad wheel. Leonard Fournette's had pretty much all season. Vick, oh, be careful there. Oh, and it's intercepted by Melvin. Taking it back to around midfield, and now we're getting into danger territory. Jay Wolfman now with his second possession, looking to pull off that Madden Daily double there, score before the half, and getting the ball back in the second half. If you're Tay here, it is a must that you try to hold him to a field goal here, Rico. Yeah, or nothing. <laughs> it was all good just to drive a go. <laughs> now Tay is facing. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a nice run. That was. See, no spin move. No, anything. That was just good stick work. That was. Nice power running there by Ricky Williams. Looking like um, a man from uh, the, the Patriots and the Eagles. Uh, what's his name? Uh, played with the Patriots and the Eagles. Everybody used to use him for Madden 18 with the trucking last year. Uh, he ran pretty hard like that. Uh, oh, you talking about Garrett Blunt? Blunt. LG, that's right. Blunt force trauma. Oh, good nice spin. Spin. oh, oh wait. Another, that's a good spin move. Almost broke another tackle, shoestring tackle. Brought him down. Great stick move there. That, that actually looks like he hit the old school B button. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was absolutely phenomenal. Now we can see why he went for that double spin a little while ago. Black round. Black round. Useful, son. Very good job right there by Jay Wolfman. 41 seconds left, doing a good job as well with the play clock. Shout out to the chat. Wiggy Wiggles made a great observation. Tay is not dancing anymore. <laughs> Tay is not bobbing. He's not weaving. All he is doing right now is fighting for his Madden life. Hey, as they used to say down the ATL, man, people don't dance no more. All they do is this. <laughs> and right now, this is stick skills, man. He is playing some Ohio, ball now. Ohio. And we'll see. He's going to have to continue to play some ball and switch, definitely switch, keep switch. Jay Wolfman out of the end zone right here because the touchdown ah. makes it really tough for him to come back here. And there's Ricky Williams. War room, stiff army. Oh, stiff arm, another guy. Drug two tacklers, actually three tacklers, another two yards. First and goal from around the two and a half. Under 30 seconds to play. Another great timeout there by Jay Wolfman. And he's going to have the ball here. Three, maybe four shots to get this ball into the end zone here. Inside of the five yard line. Jay Wolfman doing a great job. He's running it at will, and he's also Black completing round. passes. If you can be balanced like that, it's going to be a tough man to beat. And right now, he is Ricky Williams looking like the greatest running back in Madden history. Ricky, which Ricky? The, the Icky Wicky? Ricky Williams into the end zone. And that's a first touchdown for Ricky Williams. Left the Miami Dolphins, went up to Toronto for the Argonauts. Remember when he left and we were in Miami, I was like, oh, man, he's going to Toronto. That's the big smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Williams, not shy about the old uh, icky wicky, if you will. Tay has went from doing the Millie Rock to getting rocked <laughs> by a Millie. And he's, he's blowing on his oh, hands. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's trying to blow in his hands to warm him up. He needs to warm up that offense. But here, 20 seconds, you might just want to take it into the half. Because if you do too much, throw a pick, you can make it an even worse situation than it already is. Well, I, look, you, you do have to play to win. You're right. You don't want to throw a pick. But if you do, make make sure it's way downfield. Speaking about being cerebral on Madden, we want to send a shout-out to Skimbo. He oh, just yeah. checked in uh, with the chat. He had another phenomenal run there at the Classic. Was able to lock in, win so many games in a row. That's just a whole different mindset. He's an animal. It is. And, you know, coming off losing in that Patriots Club championship really showed uh, his championship medal, man, to go out there and win the Classic playing regs. Uh, great job. If he can catch that and get out of bounds, that's why you don't give up so easily. And there's Dorsett down to around the 21. Oh, my gosh. Why didn't he take a timeout? He didn't time get out? a timeout. That's that hot seat. That yeah, yeah. is the hot seat. Uh, very hot seat. You left three points on Ooh. the board. It makes it a one-possession game. Ooh. You could even take it a shot at the end zone if you wanted to. He's dead with five seconds left. We need to find out 
what happened there. We, we do. There you can see a shot here of the beautiful Twin Cities downtown Minneapolis. You can see Target Field right there at the top of your screen. How about the Twinkies, the Twins? I think they're going to be sneaky good. And then AL Central, you can see beautiful downtown Mississippi River around here. Everything's frozen. Yes, <laughs> especially <Minneapolis>. me. <laughs> I need to get back to Florida. Man, I'll tell you what, man. The Skywalks, though, very, very friendly, man. Very useful. Oh, I get lost every see, time I go around. And the corner, this is though. what separates the good from the great from the elite. Skimbo said he probably didn't know what the timeout button was on the controller oh, playing man. on the different system. Well, you know what? You know what? You know what? Start. To, you know how to pause the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pausing the game, and we will figure it out. And you're just gonna have to be mad at me. I would have been yelling at production. Hey, stop the game! Stop the game! You know something, man? I don't know. I would have done something to stop it. I would have grabbed the other guy's control. Hey, man, pause the game for a second. <laughs> Call <a> timeout. <laughs> pause the game. Throw the towel. Do something. I'm sick, but I gotta go to the restroom. Pause the game. First down and ten here in the third quarter. Jay Wolfman. See, that's what you. That's what I would have done last time. <laughs> uh oh. He's trying to end that game. Uh -oh. oh, we're loading here. Why did he hit another button? We'll, we'll, we'll get it all figured out here with the uh, the technical difficulties here. Once again, back you, here. When Larry you say Rico technical Williams. difficulties, mm -hmm. do you mean in Tay's <laughs> offense or defense, or do you mean here with the systems? Uh, I'm talking about the computer had a little malfunction. It did short circuit there in the brain a little bit. Had a little brain fart for Tay. But look, look, so, 18 years of age, first time under the lights. You're going to have some of these issues. Can you overcome those? That's the key question right now. And right now, doesn't look good for Tate, but he's got a shot. So I'm looking here in the chat right now, and everybody is sitting there throwing their two cents in. Some people are putting in three and four cents, <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> as well. Uh, put your ones if you think Tate can come back and win this one. Put your twos up if you think Jay Wolf is going to move on and face the winner of the Strafe and the Blair ones, Walsh man. project. I'm a positive guy. <laughs> you put your one? <laughs> no, no. One. That's Tay asking for one second so he can learn how to pause it and call a timeout correctly. <laughs> the question was, can he? And so I'm like, yeah, sure he can, of course. So I'm putting up the ones, man. And plus, look, uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, what he has to do is he's got to figure out which thing do I want to take away. Do I want to take away the pass or do I want to, you know what, bow my neck and take away the run? I think that's where you go and just kind of live with the consequences with the passing game. But the question is, can he stop either? He hasn't been no, able to slow on the pass. He hasn't been able to slow on the run. So it's tough. It, and that's the worst feeling because once you're helpless on the run side of the ball, then you start calling defense that you never played before. You're trying to – and that's when people start running free because you forgot what kind of zone you had behind you. You forgot to man somebody up, cross – man. like, it, it's just a whole other animal. And right now, Tay's out of his comfort zone. Maybe this is the break he needed. <laughs> is anyone comfortable in this cold weather in Minneapolis? Yeah. It's hard to get comfortable. Jay Wolf is. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at some of these first-half highlights right now. Jay Wolfman, if you're joining us now, Larry and Larica Williams, we're live here from U.S. Bank Stadium, the Madden NFL 19 Vikings Club Championship, and it was Wolfman getting the first touchdown of the game, and then Ricky Williams, a run, Ricky, run. Looking like the Ricky Williams from the University of Texas early on with the Saints, uh, maybe for a few games when I was in Miami in 05 and 06 uh, before he got busted again and, and played for the Toronto Argonauts, but he had a – Couple of touchdowns in that first half. Got that daily double. He's actually trying to get that double. Scored at the end of the first half. Had a costly turnover for uh, Tay as well. And that's where we are here in the third quarter here with uh, Wolfman up 14 to 3. Now, we just had a little check in from Winko, last year's winner. And uh, he's pretty excited about this. You're like, glad to see him tuning in, even though he happened to lose the strafing to get here. Okay, here's what's going to happen. You're going to see the score is 0-0, zero to zero, and that's what I was assuming. I wanted to make sure that I got heads up from, uh, you know, Chow, the EA folks, and our producer, uh, those guys down there. So it's 14-3. to three. Wolfman has the lead and the ball. We're going to pick it up in the third quarter, as is. The score is just wrong, but Wolfman is up once again. 14 to 3, and he does have the ball. First play here in the third quarter, and we'll resume the game there. I wanted to get your quick thoughts here, real quickly. But Skimbo winning the third time, you know, I have to ask. <laughs> I have to ask. It's Madden, and we're, and, and we're family. And where does he stand now? And, and here's where I'll tell you we had with this, the new goat. We had a heated conversation. <laughs> I in heard Las about Vegas it. That's why I want to talk about it. I and wasn't what I'll there. tell you is Skimbo is exactly where he was previously to this, okay. but with a stronger record towards moving. At the end of the day, 
Skimbo, we're going to be getting, that was the first tournament of, the, let's say, the third year. Yes, it is. So Skimbo's had an amazing two-year going into his third-year run. But Gene had, a, had an equally great three-year run. Nephew had an equally great three-year run. Good he point. just needs to do it for another couple of years. Then he definitely separates himself from the genes, from the nephews, from the secrets, and so on. And then it's just a question of, okay, where does problem go from here on out? Mm -hmm. And then can Skimbo catch him? But you got to remember... Problem still had a good showing. Even though he lost to Young Dog, which was a, a matchup and a Styles Big Fights thing, Problem didn't look bad at all. Mm -hmm. He still has the club championship series, which Skimbo didn't make right. it in to Death keep going. And that's what makes it yep. tough. The LeBron Jordan thing is a little easier because Mike's done now. So you know what you're chasing. <laughs> right. But with Problem still there and still being active, it's tough. It is tough. I guess what I would say to some people that, that have a viewpoint that I do, which is I always – I always beckon back to when I was in Boston, right? And Boston sports radio is like New York City sports radio. It's huge up there. People were like, look, I don't want to hear about what you all won. That was 10 years ago. Win me something now. Now, look, Brady's the go. He's won two of the last three or four Super Bowls. Been the three of the last four, so you can make the case. Ricky Williams off. Can he make a man miss? Oh, he's going to trust him. Can he run past him? Oh, he's brought down around the 37-yard line. Rico Williams, Larry Ridley here, will pick back up the new GOAT com conversation now with Skimbo and, and Problem. Look, two great players. You can't go wrong with either one of those guys. I think the baton is being passed. I still think Problem is the GOAT, but I think right now the best player it, it is Skimbo because he's got three goals. And I will say that right now. Currently, Michael Skimbo is the best player in Madden. I'll tell you what, he gets, another, he gets another belt. Speaking of belts. Speaking of belts. Now, here's where I tell Ricky you. Ricky Williams out there spanking, folks. And, and I wanted to say this before. 20 to 3. On that last run, Jay Wolf didn't make Tay miss. Tay missed on his own. Did you see? He was tackling air. He <laughs> shook so bad. Now, down 21 3, because that's what the score it is, is right 21 now. 21 3 now, folks. Absolutely Tay correct. needs to do something and do something quickly. Whatever his go to or money plays are, whatever. He needs to pull them out and make sure he gets seven on this drive. He does need to score. But, look, I don't think you want to go for broke because we saw what happened last time. He tried to throw a deep pass and it's picked off. But what he does need to do is kind of pick it up a little bit and, and take what the defense is getting, giving, him, giving him. But down 18 points, what is it, 21-3 now, he can still stay within the confines of his offense. One more score and it's over. But he does need to score here however that comes and however he's able to do that. And then the worst part of it is Tay hasn't even slowed down Jay Wolfman. Jay Wolfman got through his jitters. He worked that out. And somewhere, Jay Bird's sitting back watching this like a proud dad. I know. Like, I told you so. He said, you heard it here first, Larry. I I'm telling you, my man, he's going to shock the world. That's what he said. You heard it here first. Well, so far, he shocked the world in this first half. And going here, first 55 seconds of the third quarter. Once again, Jay Wolf with the lead. It is 21 to 21-3. Had a small technical difficulty. Have to resume the game, pick it back up in the third quarter. Nice, aggressive catch. I need to see more of that. If he's going to get back in this game, it's got to go to Moss, and it's got to go to Tyree Hill over and over and over again. And he needs to do it quickly. This taking an entire quarter to score gets thrown out <laughs> when you're trailing 21-3. to 3. I do agree and with you And ladies and that. gentlemen at home, don't forget, it says 7 nothing, but it's 21-3. to 3. And look. How it's, about Vic? Vic doesn't look this is looking like 05. But it's still not as fast as we've seen from a Mike Vick. Am I crazy? Like, Just that ain't a 99 Vick. Everybody else is faster. That is true. That so is it's true. a little bit more relative. If you would have had those 73 speed linebackers <laughs> that he was playing against back in the day, he'd have looked a lot faster. Oh, no, oh Vick, be careful. Is that an incomplete pass? Uh, yeah, I guess it is because he technically got it out. Brought down there by the Vikings defense uh, from Jay Wolfman. Jay Wolfman, he's. He's been strong on defense, been very effective on offense, running the ball and passing the ball. Jay Wolfman up 21-3 to here. Third quarter, three minutes and 36 seconds left in this third quarter here after that uh, small technical difficulty there. I don't like the pass patterns on this. Yeah, it's just, there's nowhere to go. It's just, he's got to have something, you know, in the flat or something across the middle. He's got to have an outlet. He's just got three guys running. You know, he got two guys running the post and one guy running the corner kind of, you know, cover that up easily. And he, he's allowing one guy to cover multiple people, and you can't do that. Uh-oh. Gotta get rid of it. Hey, there you go. Get it out there to Fournette. Pick up your, your yards. And look, if you pick up 12, 13, 14, 16 yards a pop, that is something you can live with. Now, you're right. You can't take the whole quarter to score, but if you can pick up chunk plays like that, I'm all cool with that. 
but he does have to score here. You're Next absolutely 24. correct there. He needs that seven, and he needs it quickly. And then he needs to figure out how to get a stop. And you know you hate to have to hope for it. But he's going to need some of the, that mad magic. He's going to need a fumble. He's going to need something. something to help him out. Sometimes madness gets to you, and sometimes it's not. And right now it has not been good to take, but it's still time left for Madden to be good. Oh, there's the opportunity there for Randy. Oh, why did he spin? Right back to him. And that's why he's blowing on his hands, because they're cold, and so is his offense right now. He needs to. Probably wouldn't have scored, but he would have definitely been, been inside the five-yard line for sure. First and goal for yeah, yeah. our The uh, worst tape. place it could be from the nine. So now, <laughs> yeah. now we're going to see what Tate's made up, but he needs to make solid reads here. He <laughs> cannot turn this ball over. <laughs> Fournette had some room there through the, the B gap there. If he would have taken it inside, decided to go outside there. Gain of no yards there. Actually, half a yard there. Second goal from around the eight. Tay down 21 to three. Once again, folks, 21 to three. Larry Ridley, the Madden historian. Rico Williams live here from U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Madden 19 Vikings Club Championship. Up high to Randy Moss, and that is incomplete too high for Randy. And if you remember, that's what actually cost Ivy strength in the finals last year. Just looking for that, not having any red zone offense, looking for that high ball in the end zone. Jag told him prior to playing in that finals, do not throw that high ball in the end zone. It will not work for you. It will cost you the game, and you see what happens. That's a good point. Forgot about old Jag City being out here the last two years. I was looking forward to seeing him. Had a chance again. to have dinner with him. Uh, so he, oh, well, he lives here, right? Yeah. yeah okay. He, he might be making an appearance before it's all over. But as you see, once again, Tate did not rely on his offense. Just trying to throw that high point pass again in the end zone. Now he faced himself at fourth and goal. You're down 21. I don't see how you take this three here. Well, I, I, I can see it if you can get a stop. But you're still down three <laughs> scores. <laughs> you are. Like, that does nothing to help you out. That does absolutely, there's no difference between taking that three or getting stopped right there and putting pressure. Even if you don't get it, you're putting pressure sure. on Jay Wolfman right there. Well, well, I mean, bottom line is if you don't get a stop here coming up, then it really doesn't matter. So he's hoping and he's putting all of his eggs in the basket of I can get a stop here. He's still down two scores, you're right. But it's not a three score game, it's a two oh, score so game. Right. Right. So 21. it's 15. I had it as 21 to three, I forgot yeah, he yeah. had the three over. Now, so it's 21 to six. No, it's. But you're right. I mean, look, he's got to get a stop. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, six a dozen, you know, half a dozen, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I, I agree with you. I mean, he's got he's to get something going here. And I see what he's trying to do defensively. And there you go. That's a big block shed there right there. Go. And that's what he needed. You said he needed some mad magic. That block shed was what he needed right there. And you said guys close to the line of scrimmage. He's not getting out of that zone now. No more of this, this, uh, this, this nickel, uh, this nickel normal, 3-3-5 three, three, normal. See what's to the left-hand side. Josh Gordon out there in the flat. And that is complete. McNabb finding Josh Gordon. And if you're Jay Wolfman, this is this is where you want to be. It's third and manageable, third and inches. Probably got two downs to pick up, you know, six If, if somehow, here. if Tay has a, <laughs> a great play here, he can shoot this gap, turn third and inches to fourth and one. Exactly. Maybe you get Jay Wolfman thinking about it. It's 21-6. He might feel like he's playing good defense. You never know. You might get a punt out of it. That would mean the world. The to actual score, right and I just want to make sure I clear it up with the chat. It is 21 to 6 right now. Yes. Jay Wolfman is up. 21 to 6. Wow, he passed it. And he's got a receiver that he overshoot him, and it's caught by Tyreek Hill, and no one's going to catch the cheetah. And there he is, the strikes into the painted end zone. And now it is 27 to 6. And that may have just done it right there, Rico Williams, as they used to say back in the day, Katie, bar the door. Yep. So we're looking at 28 to 6 right now for those of you who are just tuning in. It was 14 we, to 3 at the half. It was 14 to 3 at the half. Had a quick technical difficulty, so we decided to play this next half as the final half of it. So again, it's 28 to 6 right now with a minute 16 in the third quarter remaining and it's looking bad for Tay right now. He's going to need to put some points on the board and put some points on the board quickly. It is now all hands on deck for Tay. Uh, everything's got to be uh, as aggressive as it can be. It's got to be onside kicks. Your defense cannot get off the field. You, you're going to have to make something happen here. Uh, if you're Tay. Offensively, defensively, special teams wise, you're going to have to go and get it. And uh, it's a good start for him. Mike Vick uh, with the reception uh, to his receiver out there. On a first down and 10, around midfield, somewhere around the 44, 45-yard line of Wolfman. And he's got 
Randy Moss right there in that seam once again. That's been open there for Randy Moss. Haven't seen the big play potential going down the field, but nice little pass routes right there in the, in the seam right there as he throttles it down and sits down in those little open spots in those zones. First and 10, pick back, plenty of time to throw. Back across his body, he's got Randy Moss, one-handed catch. That was spectacular, down to the one. And Tay, he's in business, you wanted it, you're getting it. Yeah, and he needs, he, he needs to keep going and get in there really quickly. But Tay needs to play defense, he has not stopped hey, Jay Wolf once. You know how tough it is to win a game without getting a stop? You can't win if you don't get a stop. It's impossible, right? <laughs> you score last, you go for two. Right. Like, you would have you to gotta have, score every time. Yes. <laughs> and have the ball last. But there's a touchdown there for Tay, his first of the day. So it is now 28 to 12, pinning the extra point. Probably go for two here. Well, you can still probably go for one. It's still a two-score game. Kick the extra point here. But if he's able to get two, that hey, makes it a field it. goal and a touchdown and two-point conversion. You're so. going to have to go for two. The yes. question is, do you want to do it now? No. <laughs> I probably, I probably wait until the fourth quarter to do it. So I'm not behind the sticks where you have to go for two every single time. He does get the two. It works out for him in that situation. Now, 28-17, 11-point ball game. Here we go. And now is where you wait for the mad magic. <laughs> But since he scored so quickly and you're still technically in the third, I agree here, you do kick off. You're only down 11. That's a two-score game there. And uh, look at the spin. Be careful now. <laughs> now that's where you need that fumble. Fumbleaya, right? Fumbleruski. <laughs> he is asking for it all. Now, this is where I always find it funny in Madden, where people always talk about, hey, this went right for you. That's the only reason you won. This is it. But then when they're trailing, that's what they ask for. That's what they look for. Those same <laughs> flukes that they complain about when they're winning, <laughs> that's exactly what they're looking for, needing for, and wanting when they're trailing. Can I get something glitchy, something fluky here. Ricky Williams, power running, up the gut there. Five carries, 80 yards on the day. A very productive day for Ricky Williams. As we go into the fourth quarter, once again, folks, we're in the fourth quarter. We have a 28 to 17 lead there. 20, well, it's 11, and he had three, so it is 28 14. 28 14. That is correct. It is 28 14. That is absolutely correct. It was 14 to three at the break. He got 11 in this quarter on this half. So yeah, 28 14. So he's down by two scores there. And that was Tech Mobile like. I don't know why he was running back like that, but he was able to elude those defenders. He got that first down, keeps the clock moving, and makes it even tougher for Tay to make this comeback. Hey, that's that Jay Bird type of running and that offense there, man. A lot of those guys in that crew, that's that run heavy. You'll get some trucking. You'll get those big runs from those guys. LG, LeGarrette Blunt, and Ricky Williams doing his thing. I've seen guys use Leonard Fournette in the same role as well. Uh, it's been very productive for those guys. Don't see a lot of fumbles either when they're doing a lot of that trucking, which uh, can be a, a bit frustrating, I guess, if you're defense. Yeah, and look at the holes that they're opening for Ricky to run through. This, this has to be demoralizing for Tay to know that no matter what he does, he's not stopping or slowing down this run offense. And basically, Jay Wolf's just having his way with him. Once again, good stuff there, and thank you for the folks in the chat. It is 28 to 14. Four minutes left here in the ball game. This is the fourth quarter. Once again, had a technical issue there at halftime. It was 14 to three. 14 more points for Wolfman, 11 points for Tay. Hits, we're at 28 to 14 here. Under four minutes to play as Wolfman is starting to salt away the game with Ricky Williams now over 100 yards rushing uh, for the day as he's looking to move on to the final, uh, the championship game here in the MAG 19 Vikings Club Championship live here from U.S. Bank Stadium. There I see the crazy man that is John Randall. Where's your eye black, John Randall? My man from last year at Mall of America, one of the greatest defensive linemen in the history of the National Football League. Dude was crazy, man. Just watch That's him an line. understatement. <laughs> By the way, there are certain people where I just keep my speech into like a hey. Exactly. <laughs> like, like you don't want to say the wrong words. You don't want to say the wrong thing because you saw the fury. He played this game with a it passion was not an act. that was <laughs> unparalleled. And that's what made it so crazy. Like, he's got to be joking, right? No. It's just it screws loose, and you don't want to be a part of that when, when, it's, you know, when it's like that. So a uh, big shout-out to John Randall. He'll back again. He was here last year. We were here uh, in 
January uh, for the Club Championship, the Vikings Club Championship at Mall of America. McNabb completes a pass again. He's got his receiver, Josh Gordon, near the red zone, and that's probably going to do it. Jay Wolfman up 28-14, unless he turns the ball over here in the next couple of plays. He's going to hang on and win this game and get into the championship where he will get the winner of Ivy Strafen and Blair Witch Project. First down and 10, McNabb in the gun. Definitely going to see some run-heavy stuff here from Ricky Williams. This time brought down gain of about one. It'll be second down and nine as we get close to the two-minute warning. Tay calls a timeout here as two remaining. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna need something extraordinary to happen right now. He's taking those timeouts, but it might be a little too late. Second down and nine inside of the 15. Oh, Ricky Williams. Deion Sanders making a business decision to make a tackle. Hey, hey watch out. You saw him come for Romo. <laughs> Romo said he couldn't tackle. We don't want that smoke. <laughs> Third down Ohio. and eight. Shout outs to Drinny in the chat just making an appearance. Another great Madden player who made a nice run at the Classic as well. Look for Drinny to make a lot of noise this year. Young, the belt owner. The youth movement. Young Drinny and the bandana. Doing a good job. That's pretty cool, man, how he's hooked up with the Cowboys, man, and uh, he's got the new org down there, man. I, I love to see the growth of all these players. Uh, problem right. One of the leaders out there showing these guys how to get it done. You see W, you see uh, Skimble, all these guys out there making a name for themselves, growing that brand. Love to see that here uh, in Mac. Fourth down and eight here. We're at the two-minute warning. Wolfman with the 28-14 lead. Looking to make this a 17-point ball game, which would be a three-score ball game, and virtually make it, don't want to say impossible, but unlikely uh, that Tay would be able to come back. We've seen stranger things happen. Kick is up, and it is good. So now, 17, add it to 14, you get 31. Tay with 14 points. One minute, 57 seconds left in the ball game. Once again, Larry Ridley, Rico Williams live here at U.S. Bank Stadium for the MAG-19 Vikings Club Championship here. And there's the fumble. There's the fumble table for the wrong for guy. It. <laughs> <laughs> it to the wrong one. So that, that's going to do it there as uh, Jay Wolfman gets the ball back. A uh, great afternoon for Jay Wolfman. Five possessions. He's got five scores, four touchdowns, and a field goal. Here's a six possession. Probably can score if he wanted to. Will likely run out the clock. Tay with just one timeout. So it will be Jay Wolfman uh, and that and that Jay gang there with Jay Bird and Kwani and T. Moore and those guys. He practiced with his crew all week. Felt good about it. Knew he was going to come out here and perform. Was a little nervous about his live event, but I like his demeanor. Let Tay do the you know the swing in the swing, listening to the music, getting a little crunk. He just says, I'll just show up, and I'll be consistent, and I'll move on to the championship game. And the thing you have to like right now that you're Jay Wolfman is you played the first game. You got your win. You know you're in the finals. You get to sit back and watch the Ivy Strafen, Blair Walsh Project game and just, and just watch it, pick it apart, figure out what you're going to do to stop whoever wins that, figure out what you're going to do to score on whoever wins that. That you're really in the driver's seat going into this championship game. Well, also, you just made an extra grant, too. Oh, now, now you got three G's in your pocket, man. And if you're Jay Wolf, man, you got the good folks here from New Ulm, Minnesota, about a half hour from Mankato. Jay Wolf, man, got that extra grant in his pocket. He's feeling real good heading back to on the outskirts of Mankato and Mankato State. Adam Thielen and the crew here. Vikings, a big game tomorrow against the Miami Dolphins. You cannot let the fish come inside of U.S. Bank Stadium and get a win. As they used to say with the Jets, I was in Boston with the Patriots. You got to squish the fish, and I think they'll get her done tomorrow against Miami. Keep, keep that heat on the Chicago Bears and the NFC North, and that's going to do it. You'll get see some good sportsmanship there. That's what we're all about. We are Madden. Tay on the left side, but that man right there with the camera shot on him, the single shot, Jay Wolfman. Jay Bird called it. He got it done. Rico, he's moving on to the final. They're calling him the Madden Andy Dalton in the chat. <laughs> but the question is, Andy Dalton always has a great regular season. But when he gets to the postseason, can he get it done? We're going to see if Wolfman 
can hold it down. Jay Wolfman, the rifle. All right, let's go down to my man, P.A., the voice of the Vikings, standing by with Wolfman. What up, P.A.? Hey, what's up, man? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You, um, you fooled your parents, and um, I was sitting with your parents watching the first half of the game, and um, I believe it was your dad who said, I had no idea he was that good. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I guess the fair question is, how much time have you buried yourself away from everything to get that good? Uh... I don't know a lot. I don't, I don't really. <laughs> I don't know if I can quantify that number for you, but you um uh, you had a great uh, rooting section here for you, right? Everybody excited how Ethan performed today? Did that pump you up? Yeah. You know, as um as the game went, uh, some key sequences here. The um uh, the holding him to a field goal on the first drive, I thought was big. Mm -hmm. The interception in front of halftime, and then that um, I believe it was a third and short call with the uh, pass center of the field over the middle. When um when when you're thinking about you know how you're going to run an offense or a defense in Madden, um are there some keys? Uh yeah, the key. I don't know if you guys could see, but every play there, I was kind of setting up my runs, and he would shift his line if I would go one way, and I would go back the other way. So just kind of reading what he's doing on D, um, making sure I stay in field goal range and that kind of thing. With the salary cap, what determines how you select your players? Uh, it's kind of like uh, you pick some studs and then you pick some guys that are more budget guys, um, but you pick them, I don't know, I think Madden is all about speed. So that's kind of that's kind of how I do it, I'd say. In the next match, do you have a preference as to who you'd like to play in the championship, Alec or Ryan? Uh, I want to play Ryan. <laughs> Why? Uh, because I played him in groups and I beat him. So I feel pretty good. Wow, that's fantastic. All right, uh, congratulations, Ethan. And uh, Larry and Rico, back to you.